Yeah, I'm back. Um, Sorry? Yeah, I'm so jealous. Why? To be young again. <laughs> uh. So we ended here. Um, the only reason I'm not jealous is because I've seen how much every time I withdrew my money and started another business, I've grown enough to be able to continue growing with you guys, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Versus if I had just stayed stagnant, compounding is slow. So at this point, I still would be impatient. It still wouldn't look like I'm on my way to 43 million, you know? It would be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. But otherwise, yeah, we're here now. Um. Okay, I'm gonna change this back to eight percent because that number just my head can't comprehend it yet. So I'm gonna take it back to eight percent, and let's say worst case scenario, you've got your pension, which is however much you've um got your house paid off, kids varsity car paid off you 65 you've kept healthy and there's eight million rand that somebody just comes to you and says oh by the way there's this part of money that you had forgotten about i'm done the first part of the lecture was my oh. <laughs> yeah. now it's time for your response What do I say? Yeah. I mean, I was thinking of just maxing with tax free and then the remainder I put into a retirement annuity. Okay. So essentially put 36, again, assuming that you've got 100,000, eh? you put 36K yeah. this year into tax free and then mm -hmm. 64K into retirement annuity yeah and then next year assuming you save 100k again you essentially just do the same 36k into tfsa and then 64,000 into retirement annuity mm. okay you have my vote and can my kids play at your house no problem. <laughs> that's all. Literally, that's all. I'm going to do the maths for you. Ne? So you already know that your um, TFSA is going to be 8 million minimum at 65, yeah. right? Mm. Let's calculate what the retirement annuity is going to do. And I'll tell you who to take out the retirement annuity with, either 10x or one vest. Um, I'm a fan of easy equities because it's an easy to use interface. You can just go on it and get what you want. But the reason I'm a fan of 10x, so 10 to the exponent x, that's the name of the company. Or what was the other one I said? Um, Outvest is because they have got the lowest fees. And I can tell you now, all pension funds are buying the Citrix 40 ETF, all of them. The only reason someone buys Ellen Gray over Sunlam is because they like the color red over the color blue, and they feel safer in mm -hmm. the color green in the case of Old Mutual over blue or red, literally. That's the only reason. And the fact that whoever, Coronation does better ads than both of them or Prudential does better ads than all of them. But when you look at fees, that is what eats into your investment returns. And when you look at what's the underlying asset that they're investing in, Regulation 28 forces them to invest on the JSE. The JSE forces them to invest by virtue of their size. So for example, if you have a fund that has got more than 1 billion rands, 
in assets under management, which they all have, you cannot buy a share that is that has got a market cap of 300 million, for example. So then it eliminates the investment universe for them and they all left with buying Naspers, Anglo, Sasso, the same shares in the top in the top 40. So that's why I'm comfortable to say mm. rather go with the cheapest um what do you call this um retirement annuity provider which is either 10x or outvest and i know people especially people some people's parents age may say would say ah buy no outvest buy no 10x <laughs> I, I, they even safe or whatever i'm not impersonating yeah. anyone at this point right are they even safe? The answer is the actual company doesn't hold the investments. So there's an actual requirement in law and in how the things are structured that when Palesa opens a pension fund account with me at Sunlam, I have to open a separate trust account where I put Palesa's money in. And if I, as Sunlam, fail, as a company, then Palisa's money is in a trust account. So the notion that Sunlam is safer than 10X, is safer than Outvest, is not true. Your money will be in a trust account that belongs to you, and Sunlam will just get paid a fee for being the ones that send you a statement at the end of the month or at the end of the year and for being the ones that say happy birthday to you on the wrong day because they took it from wherever, you know? Mm. Yeah. So the question of whether it's safe or not, it's a non-question. Yeah, well. So yeah. we've got 8 million from your tax-free savings. Now let's calculate... If you're putting away sixty-four thousand in your retirement annuity, and you're doing that from today to fifty-five, because it locks you out at fifty-five minus twenty-three for thirty-two years. Please don't judge me for doing basic maths on a calculator. For there is two years, and I'm gonna keep it yearly, ne? Yeah. Again, the conservative thing, compound period. Um, and then there will be additional deposits of sixty four thousand every year, and that will happen at the end of the year. The reason this time I'm selecting end of the year is because unlike your TFSA, I agree with TFSA, you say, I'm going to put it in now, and then the remainder I'm going to put in, in my pension fund. With the pension fund, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you only reach the 64,000 by the end of the year, not at the beginning of the year. So I tell the calculator that these additional deposits are going to be put in at the end of the year, and they're not going to increase by inflation. So I'm saying to you now that if you decide that for the rest of my life, I'm just going to put away 64,000 every year towards my pension, and I'm not going to add any more than that, meaning that salary increases go to you to blow, to do whatever you want to do with it, as long as in a year, 64,000 rand is going towards your pension. So this is a very conservative estimate. What tends to happen is that as your salary increases, your pension increases as well because it's a percentage of your gross salary. But you actually can request them that, listen, please just always keep it at 64,000, which I hope you don't do. If you do do, you'll see why you've earned the right to do that. And that's why I say you've got option A, B, C, D, you name it. Yeah, well. So I'm yeah. keeping it at 64,000. 
And 64,000 is how much a month? 64,000, right? Uh, it's probably 8,000, but because I do lazy math, what's this? Divide by 12. Okay, 5.3. Oh, guys, I'm so lazy and wrong today. 5.3. So that's very doable, especially because. Most companies will say whatever you put in will match it. So it basically means you just have to put in 2.6. They'll put in the other 2.6. Come end of the year, you've got 64,000 gone to your pension. Ever? All right. Mm. And I said compound interval yearly. And I say calculate. So that's an additional... 9 million rand, and that's at 8%. Meaning that with your formula of saying I'm going to max out my tax free and then max and then contribute the remainder 64,000 to my pension, you are going to retire with 17 million 340,840 rand. Minimum. And as I said to you, I kept your contributions to pension literally balanced, or what is it, flatline. Meaning that if you're earning a hundred thousand rand a month, you're gonna be that ignorant person that says, Nope, I'm only putting 2.6 towards my pension not anything more and you can blow the remaining 97,400 you will retire with 17.3 million rand in your bank account And I'll give you a hint. Question. Give... Yes, question. Go ahead. Is it allowed or possible to take Emma retirement annuities with at least two companies or something like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It does nothing except make you feel better. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You said you were going to give me a hint. Ah, I thought I gave you many hints. Um, I'll let, you'll have to take me back to the context. What are we talking about when I said I'm going to give you a hint? Mm. 